To run a proton NMR spectrum in top spin on the Fourier 300 NMR spectrometer, you first should open under Easy NMR on the top menu bar here. Open Easy NMR. You'll see a menu bar appear, a menu box appear on the side. The first thing you have to do is eject the sample that's in the magnet by clicking on Eject. You should hear air being turned on and you should see a sample come to the top of the magnet. Take the sample from the magnet and replace it with the sample of interest. The sample of interest should be placed in the blue spinner and the depth of the sample should be set with the depth gauge. The spinner goes down, push the sample tube to the bottom. While you still hear air coming out of the magnet, put the sample on top of the magnet. It should float on a cushion of air. Never put a sample in the magnet if you do not hear the air coming out. The sample will fall down and break inside the NMR probe. You can insert your sample in the magnet by clicking on the insert button. You should hear the air being turned off and your sample should drop down into the NMR probe. The next thing you have to do is establish the deuterium lock. So again on this menu we're going to go to the next button which says lock. When I click that it's going to ask you to select the solvent in which you've dissolved your sample. We've dis I've dissolved this sample in CDCL3, so I'll click on CDCL3 and then OK. You'll, it will say, please wait while the lock is being established. This will take a couple of uh, seconds, perhaps 10, 15, 20 seconds. It says that the lock has been established. You should check that the lock truly is established by looking at the small lock window at the bottom of the screen. There will be a red or a green line going back and forth. This should be above 50% of the scale of the window indicating that the lock is indeed established. Once the lock is established, you could click the shim button. This will calculate the appropriate shims for the magnet to make the magnet as homogeneous as possible around your sample, thereby giving the sharpest possible lines. The message says you must wait until the shimming is finished before proceeding. So don't do anything until the magnet is shimmed and it's reported in this window that the shimming is actually finished. This may take about 30 seconds to a minute of time to get, depending on how badly the magnet is shimmed around your sample. We'll wait for this to be finished. Alright, it says shimming is finished. So the next thing we do is, is we have to tell the NMR spectrometer what it is we want to do. If we want to run a proton NMR spectrum, we click on this green proton button. It's asking us to create a data set. This is the name of the data set for the last person who used the instrument. I'm going to delete that with the back arrow. And I'm going to enter a data set name that is GF, my initials and then underscore say sample 2 if it was sample 2 for example and then click on the OK button. It's going to ask me to create an experiment number. Right now it's set to experiment number 4. I'm going to set it to experiment number 1. You should, it's probably a good idea to always start using experiment number 1. Underneath the same name, you can collect up to 999 different experiments. So if you wanted to run a carbon, you could run that, say, in experiment 2 of the same data set name. If you wanted to run a depth 135, you could run that in experiment 3, for example. We're going to use experiment 1 for our proton spectrum. I'll click OK. It says the proton parameters are now set up and ready. If I want to use all of the default conditions, I can simply click the Start button at this point. If I want to change the number of scans I want to collect, I can click on the Scans button. If I do that, it gives the default number of scans, which is 16. I'm going to change it to 8 scans, and then click the OK button. Once I do that, it tells me how long it will take the data collection to be um, completed. The experiment time in this case is approximately 36 seconds. Now I'm all set to collect the data. I will click on the Start button. 
says measuring receiver gain. So the receiver gain is something like the volume control on your radio. It's finding an appropriate receiver gain for your particular sample. Once this has been calculated by the spectrometer, then the data collection will, uh, will begin. So we'll wait for the data collection to begin. You can follow what's going on in the bottom here where it says no acquisition running because it was measuring the receiver gain. The first scan is minus one, so there's a, a dummy scan collected, which is simply to have your, your system at equilibrium before we start. Now we're on the first scan of eight, the second scan of eight. If we want to process the data while it's being collected, we can click on process 1D and we'll get an NMR spectrum on the screen after just a few scans. If we wanted to stop the acquisition before it was finished, we can click on the Halt button. We'll wait for this acquisition to finish. It's now on the sixth scan of eight, the seventh scan of eight. So it's about to be finished. It's now finished. We can see the NMR spectrum plotted on the screen. I can click Close to close this window. And we see that we have the NMR spectrum of ethyl benzene on the screen. Once you're finished collecting the NMR data, you'll process it on a workstation, but you'll want to remove your sample from the magnet, so you can click Eject. You, again, you will hear the air come on. Your sample should come to the top of the magnet. You should pick up your sample and replace it with the sample that was in the magnet uh, before you started. Once you've done this, then you can click on the Insert button to insert the dummy sample into the magnet. And now you should proceed to a workstation to uh, process your data.